Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here in Western Canada. I hope that all of you are having a great week so far. The last week of 2022, everybody's getting ready for 2023. Uh, welcome Fuang, hi Chayani and Tien, nice to see our members joining in on this class. Hi Akira, Ridham, good to see students in the class. This is a class that's for everyone and we are targeting speaking part one about writing. So these speaking part one questions will be about your writing habits and we are going to learn strategies on how to answer speaking questions so you get a high band score. You will have a chance to practice with me, listen to your peers, do repetition, and improve your vocabulary, fluency, and English. So hang in there, stay with me, and enjoy this class. Welcome, Shaknaz. Uh, students, this lesson is brought to you by aehelp.com for academic IELTS success. Check us out there. For general IELTS, visit us at gieltshelp.com. These are the websites that power these live lessons. If you're enjoying these lessons, definitely sign up for the premium package on these websites because we use these websites as the core materials, the textbooks, audio materials uh, for these lessons. This is aehelp.com. We're going to use this a little bit later today to speak with students. You can click this big red button here to join our premium IELTS package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. So you don't need to pay every month. You just pay once and you can use it as long as you need to pass the IELTS exam. You can try it by clicking the green button as well. We are an IDP affiliate. We're a British Council partner. I'm a certified British Council agent. I have been teaching IELTS for nearly 20 years and we're an IELTS test registration center. We help thousands of students uh, every year pass their IELTS exams through our websites. All you have to do is click that big red button and then you can use the code uh, CHANGE9 for a 10% discount uh, during checkout. So check that out. It's for you to uh, reach your goals and your dreams. For general IELTS, it's gieltshelp.com. Again, click that big red button there and you are golden. Students, uh, we have apps. Check out the apps in your app stores, Academic IELTS Help and General IELTS Help. Those apps will link to the websites for integrated uh, learning. If you have questions about the IELTS, about IELTS speaking, about our courses, you can send me an email, adrian at aehelp.com or admin at aehelp.com. We love getting emails. We love helping students uh, with their inquiries. Um, and uh, of course, you can learn vocabulary and more tips on our Instagram profiles, IELTS underscore aehelp, GIELTS help. Students, we've got classes for you over the next few days. Uh, today, of course, speaking part one. Uh, tomorrow, we'll have reading for members. Then we'll have task two writing for our subscribers. So definitely subscribe to this channel. Hit the notification button. That way you get um, notices when we uh, release new videos. In fact, we will be releasing a new video within the next 24 hours. And then, of course, uh, we'll have speaking part two and speaking part three on the last days of the year on the 31st. So join me for that. For some of you, you'll probably be very close to uh, the new year, if not already in the new year. So you'll be in the future. I will be in the past as I always am here on the west coast of Canada. Um, this is uh, our latest video released this last week. Uh, check that out. I've just uh, put the link into the chat. Now let's get cracking with speaking part one. All right, everybody. Uh, speaking part one, the first part of your speaking interview. 
For those of you who are new to the IELTS exam, speaking section is a 12 to 15 minute interview. It is by far the fastest part of the IELTS exam. The reading, the listening, the writing, they're approximately an hour each. Speaking, 12 to 15 minutes, so a quarter of the time, but has uh, the same weight for your overall mark as the other uh, section. So here, you know, you've got a bit more pressure because you only have 12 to 15 minutes to show your best English uh, and then it will have a 25% impact on your overall IELTS band score. So you really have to do well. You have to be on the ball. You have to be focused. Okay. By the way, uh, when you hear me um, say new words or uh, new idioms, write them down. So I just said, you know, you have to be on the ball. You have to be on the ball in IELTS uh, speaking. Um, on the ball means you have to be focused. It's an idiom. That means you need to be focused and you need to do well. Okay. Now, if anybody uh, likes to play basketball, you know exactly what that means because when you're playing basketball, you're on the ball. If you're not on the ball, then the ball comes and <laughs> hits you in the head and uh, it's a problem. Um, your team's not too happy about it. The crowd is laughing and uh, now you're losing some points. So uh, you need to be on the ball. You need to catch that ball, shoot that hoop, score some points, and that's what you need to do on your IELTS uh, speaking, okay? And you've got 12 to 15 minutes to do it. So you need to show your best English right away. And some people think that the first few questions don't really matter, like when they ask you for your identification or your name during the introduction. It absolutely does, okay? Often the first few minutes of a basketball game decides the outcome of the game. It's the same for the aisles, okay? The first few questions can really set the mood for the speaking section. So my first tip to you today is <clears throat> use the introductory uh, questions um, to create the perfect mood for your IELTS uh, speaking interview. Namely, fluency and confidence. That means answer the intro questions with accurate, fluent, and confident answers. Okay, that's what you want to do, all right? Let's get into it. Um, so students, uh, for now, you can put your answers into the chat. I will take a look at them and I will tell you what is going on, uh, whether they are good answers or they need improvement. So when you go to your IELTS exam, arrive an hour early. Build your confidence, build your fluency before you sit into your test, okay? So build, there's another tip, tip two, uh, build your fluency and confidence before you meet the examiner. Means show up to the exam one hour before. Speak English only. Uh, find a speaking partner. That means another candidate waiting for the exam and practice speaking. Okay? That one tip alone, when you do this, you can improve your band score by one band. Okay? That one tip alone can get you one more band. Okay? By following this tip, you can get a band score better. Okay, all right, very, very important. Okay, so you show up early and then uh, you practice with somebody. So when you get called into the exam 
and you meet the examiner and the examiner says, uh, may I see your identification? then you are able to give a nice full sentence answer for this. Give me a nice full sentence answer. Don't just say sure. Definitely don't say sure please because that's bad English. Okay, so first question is may I see your identification? <clears throat> Gladly. Um, please allow me a moment to uh, dig it out of my pocket here it is please take a look okay um, sometimes you know your passport is stuck in your pocket especially if you're wearing jeans so communicate build confidence don't feel awkward that you're digging in your pocket for your passport it's totally normal uh, it's probably not a good idea for you to be carrying your passport in your hand and gripping it the whole time between your registration and the time that you sit with the examiner. So, uh, gladly, uh, please allow me a moment to dig it out of my pocket. Here it is. Please take a look. Nice, natural, fluent, complete answer. Okay. Rakwea says, Yes, happily. Um, here's uh, here is my uh, passport I have used for registration. Please have a look. Good, Rakwea. Okay. Domenico says, certainly. Oh, let's make this a bit smaller. I'm just noticing that you don't see everything on the screen. I didn't see anybody tell me that, but I see the feedback screen now, so let's adjust it. There it is, now you can see everything. Okay, so certainly here's my passport, which I used to register for this exam a few weeks ago. Just give me a moment to flip to the page with my credentials. Okay, and then you flip and you show, and Domenico, that is good. And see, using um, this kind of, um, uh, expression like flip to the page okay it's great it's natural they're looking for natural English good communication okay or here with Raquea yes uh, happily it's a lovely way uh, to start the answer students this is speaking so make sure to speak and repeat okay speak and repeat don't just listen. It's not. This is not simply a listening exercise today. This is a speaking class. So make sure to speak and repeat. Okay. Let's do this. May I see your identification? Repeat the question. May I see your identification? Gladly. Please allow me a moment to dig it out of my pockets. Here it is. Please take a look. Okay, good. Uh, allow me a moment to dig it out of my pocket. Again, that is nice natural English. Okay. That's what we want. Showing fluency and confidence from the very beginning. The next question is always, what is your full name? Give me a nice uh, full sentence answer for this one. So what is your full name? Okay. All right, doesn't have to be super long. It just has to be a full sentence. My whole name is Andrew McLeod. Please call me by my nickname, Andy. All right, Andy. Keep in mind, they will ask you, what should I call you? Answer that question so you show the examiner that you prepared. And what should I call you? Don't wait for that. Answer it. Okay. All right, um, 10. Here's a good example of it. So Tan says, uh, my full name <clears throat> is Peter Parker. Now again, uh, Tan, make sure you finish it, okay? My full name is Peter Parker. Um, just call me 
or please call me. It's more polite. Please call me uh, by my nickname, Spidey. Okay. So 10, it's good. And in these live classes, you don't have to share your uh, real name. It's okay to do this, all right? So Tan says, my full name is Peter Parker. Please call me by my nickname, Spidey. Okay, Tan, sure, we'll call you Spidey. Maybe you're agile. You like to swing between uh, high-rise buildings in the city. Who knows? I don't know what your hobbies are, right? Um, Fuang, let's see what Fuang has. Fuang says, my given name are, my given name Zhe Fuang. Remember those plurals. My given names are Fuang Kan and my family name are Ho Nguyen. Please refer to me as Fuang. Very nice, polite and professional, Fuang. I like it. I like this, please refer to me as. This is a really nice professional way to request uh, to be called in a certain way, okay? So my given names are Fuang Kan and my family name uh, is. If it's names, if it's multiple family names, then it's S. So Fuang, remember those S's, okay? Students, don't make mistakes in these first couple of questions. It's kind of like dropping the ball, okay? It's another ball idiom for you. All of these fun ball idioms, right? So the first ball idiom I gave you is on the ball. Um, and the second one I'll give you is don't drop the ball. So don't drop the ball on the first uh, two, three questions. Because it just sounds bad, okay? Uh, drop the ball here means make a mistake. And again, it's kind of like if you think about basketball, right? The ball's coming, I got it, it's gone. <laughs> Right, so um, don't drop the ball. Uh, nobody likes that. Your team doesn't like it. The coach doesn't like it. I don't like it. Um, so really pay attention, okay? Uh, practice a strong introduction before your IELTS exam, all right? Set up for a good first impression, all right? Okay, so again, uh, repeat after me. What is your full name? My whole name is Andrew McLeod. Please call me by my nickname, Andy. All right. Andy, the speaking has three parts. I will give you instructions for each. For part one, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Do you work or study? Very common question. Do you work or study? Um, Okay, there's a nice full sentence answer for you at the band nine level. Again, students, remember, we're practicing for that perfect band nine, and I'm giving you tips and strategies to achieve that. So here's the question, repeat after me. Try to copy my intonation and my pronunciation. When you have good, strong, intermediate English, of course, try to not read what I, wrote on the screen but try to do it from sound only if you have to cheat a little bit and read the screen that's fine but really focus on just hearing what i say catching the keywords especially the content and then copying here we go do you work or study i both have a job and i go to school i'm working as a cashier at mcdonald's on the weekends and i use my earnings to support my bachelor studies in accounting at the university of regina All right, so notice this, both and. This is a correlative conjunction. Correlative conjunctions emphasize key points. So 
So use them to emphasize key points in your answers, okay? Both and, whether or, neither nor. Repeat these after me. Either or, neither nor, whether or, both and, not only, but also, okay? These are very good to emphasize when you do both, okay? All right, um, so that's a band nine answer. Let's see what some of you have, okay? Akira says, I am a high school student and I'm going to graduate next year. So currently I'm preparing for my main subject, math and English, which uh, I am uh, taking an exam uh, for to enter university. Okay, couple of mistakes there. Akira, this would be about a band seven. Uh, with the mistakes and with the information. So a couple of mistakes, bit off topic at the end. All right, you need to stay on topic, all right? So I'm a high school student and I'm graduating next year. Currently I'm preparing for my main subjects, math and English. And I'm taking exams soon to enter university next year. I'm not sure if I will have a job once I start my postgraduate studies. Okay. So remember the question. Students always keep the question in mind. This is a very important tip. Okay. So very important tip for the highest band scores you need to continuously keep the question in mind okay so keep the question in mind throughout your answer not just at the beginning that happens a lot uh, for candidates um, is that they answer the question and the first part of the answer seems good it seems like okay they're thinking about the question but then the second half of the answer starts to really deviate and go off topic and again it's kind of like in the game of basketball in the first part of the game the player is doing great shooting the hoops and then suddenly they're throwing the ball at the people in the crowd right it's like what what are you doing why are you throwing the ball to that kid in the first row um, so stay on topic from start to finish okay uh, Karina has a little bit of a different answer for us Karina says I work in a meteorological station in Manado uh, North Sulawesi as a uh, forecaster I work from uh, Monday to Friday a week Okay, Karina, that's about a band um, six if you're really fluent, but it's closer to band five. It's got some mistakes and a bit awkward. A bit unnatural. Okay. So, um, I work. Let's fix this. Okay. I'll show you, Karina, what this should look like. It should look like this. I work as a meteorologist at the um, Monado uh, North Sulawesi uh, Wesi weather station uh, from Monday uh, to Friday and on the weekends and in the evenings I'm uh, practicing my English so that I can um, get a job abroad in the next few years. Okay, so this would be your band nine upgrade to answer that question, Karina. Okay, so one more time, let's try this. Karina, work with me here. 
I work as a meteorologist at the Monado North Sulawesi Weather Station from Monday to Friday and on the weekends and in the evenings I'm practicing my English so that I can get a job abroad in the next few years. Okay, much more natural, more fluent. It's much more the way that you would hear this response from a native English speaker who works as a meteorologist. I know it's a bit of a tricky one, but um, there's always a better way. Okay. All right. Um, so keep that in mind. Now the next question. Why are you taking this test? Give me a nice full sentence. As you can tell, I'm taking different students' uh, responses all the time. You're very welcome, Karina. I'm glad that you're here with us in the last few days of the year here and you're studying. That just shows how dedicated so many of you are to be here with me, to be learning so close to the New Year's. Okay, um, why are you taking the test? Perhaps I've mentioned it. Um, as I had just mentioned, I am taking the IELTS so that I can uh, immigrate to the US and uh, work for a news uh, station as a weather man, and in this case, if you're a woman, a weather woman. This has been my uh, dream since uh, childhood. Okay, so um, let's uh, stick with Karina's answer here. Okay, if you tell the examiner a piece of information and then you get another question that's asking you about the same information, that is great because then you can go into more detail and sound like you're having a conversation. For high band scores, you want to sound like you're having a conversation. Okay, so this is another big, big tip here. For high bands, band eight to nine, you need to sound like you are having a conversation. That means that if you get a question uh, which you have already answered, then go into more detail and use expressions like, um, as I was saying, okay, so that's a really good way to do it, all right? So again, repeat after me, uh, why are you taking this test? As I had just mentioned, I'm taking the IELTS so that I can immigrate to the US and work for a news station as a weather woman. This has been my dream since childhood. Okay, Gaurav, let's see what kind of answer Gaurav has here. Gaurav says, I am taking this course. Uh, course is the wrong word here, Gaurav, um, because this is not the question. The question says, why are you taking this test? So you would say, I'm taking this exam, if you want to paraphrase, or assessment. I'm taking this exam to fulfill immigration requirements and to uh, find. You can't switch between the gerund and the infinitive, Gaurav. You have to stay with one or the other. So if you're using um, the um, infinitive to fulfill, then you have to use that uh, in the next uh, verb composition as well. So I am taking this exam to fulfill immigration requirements and to find a job abroad. I want to go abroad to where abroad? I want to go to the UK, give more details, and settle down as it is my as this has been, as this has been. Use present perfect, my dream since I was a child. Okay. Now it's a band eight, band nine. Before it was a band five, maybe even a band four with all those mistakes, okay? So be really careful. All right, anonymous, same mistake. It's not a course. They're asking you, why are you taking this test? Not this course, okay? Igrim, careful. If you change the subject, change the topic that's going to cost you. Okay, 
Igrim says, I'm taking the IELTS exam to acquire an education overseas and to improve my English to an advanced level so that I can get a high earning uh, job in the future as the CEO of a major tech company like uh, Microsoft. Okay. I agree. I'm not bad. Finish it. Finish it. Details. Okay. All right. So you're doing a good job. Let's go through this nice and smooth so you get a real feel for a high band introduction. So again, copy me, repeat me, follow with me. Here we go. Welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. May I see your identification? Gladly. Please allow me a moment to dig it out of my pockets. Here it is. Please take a look. What is your full name? My whole name is Andrew McLeod. Please call me by my nickname, Andy. Do you work or study? I both have a job and I go to school. I'm working as a cashier at McDonald's on the weekend and I uh, use my earnings to support my bachelor's studies in accounting at the University of Regina. Why are you taking this test? As I had just mentioned, I'm taking the IELTS so that I can immigrate to the US and work for a news station as a weather woman. This has been my dream since childhood. Let's talk about writing. How often do you write? Okay, give me a nice full sentence answer for this one, students. So here we go. Okay, here we go. So uh, again, copy me, all right? How often do you write? I frequently put pen to paper. Whether I'm typing up an email on the computer or jotting down a grocery list, I'm constantly composing my thoughts. I would say at least five to six times daily. I just wrote two essays yesterday in preparation for this exam. That's your band nine, okay? One more time, I frequently put pen to paper. Whether I'm typing up an email on the computer or jotting down a grocery list, I'm constantly composing my thoughts. I would say at least five to six times daily. I just wrote two essays yesterday in preparation for this exam. Okay, putting pen to paper means writing. It's a nice idiom for this. It's quite tricky, but that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to teach you some amazing uh, vocabulary and idioms along with the right strategies for those band nine answers, okay? Notice again, the whether um, or, so using that correlative conjunction that I was talking about earlier. When we're doing the practicing um, in the uh, audio on the website, make sure to use these correlative conjunctions, okay? So again, how often do you write? This is the question. Let's see what we have as the answer. Shaknaz. Here's Shaknaz's answer. Shaknaz says, writing is a pathway to say something to people, like letter, poem, story, or other things. I mainly write in social media like Facebook, Instagram. This is a band four, why? Students, so Shaknaz, it's, it's important and I, I'm going to use your answer to um, really emphasize this point. So I want you to rethink this, okay? And a lot of students make this kind of a mistake. This is a band four. Why? 
There's a huge mistake with this answer. What's the huge mistake? Chayani, it's not out of topic, it's off topic. Andrew, very good. Andrew says it's off topic. The question asks, how often do you write, not what you write? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. So it's off topic, it doesn't answer the question. All right, you need to answer the question. The question is how often do you write? Um, if we ask ourselves how often does Shaknaz write, we have no idea, right? So Shaknaz, if you say this, we don't know how often you write. I have no idea from your answer, okay? So you would have to recompose this whole answer, all right? Okay, Azriel has this answer. Let's take a look. Azriel says, I used to write a lot during my teenage years, but as I grew older, I rarely put out time for writing because as there is a lack of time. Band four, why? Okay. This is another band four, especially, um, so here, I can't hear your pronunciation. I can't hear your fluency. So of course I'm judging your band score purely on content, what you're giving me, right? And here again, it's a band four. Why? So Raquia says it's not too coherent. I think it's fairly coherent, Raquia. There's a different mistake here with this one, with Azriel. Still doesn't answer the question. Okay. The question is, how often do you write? It means now, not when you were a teenager, but how often do you uh, write now? Do you rarely write now? What does that mean? Like once a day, twice a day? It's still confusing for me. You're not answering the question directly. Students, you have to answer questions directly in your IELTS speaking to get good band scores. If you don't do that, you are setting yourself up for failure, even if you have good English, okay? So it's not clear what's being uh, given here as the answer to this question, okay? All right. Here's uh, my Newell, all right? My Newell Anuvla. I'm looking for an answer that answers the question, okay? So uh, my Newell says, I frequently put pen to paper, whether I'm writing on paper or typing on a computer. As I said earlier, I'm a tutor and I have to write on uh, the board for students. I write at least six to seven pages a day. Good. Now I have an idea of what you write, how often you write. Okay, numbers are really, really useful when you're being asked how many, how much, okay? When you're giving somebody a quantity, give them a number. It's a million dollars, it's four times a day, it's every second Tuesday of the month. Give them a number, okay? All right, um, so then we keep going. Now students, I want you to practice this with me for real, just like in the real IELTS exam. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some volunteers for speaking, okay? Um, the way to do this is register a free account or if you have an account or a premium account, log in at aehelp.com. I just put the URL into the chat, okay? So aehelp.com, go to that URL. That's where we're going to use um, the uh, chat, kind of like WhatsApp or Skype. Uh, if you already have an account, log in to your My Student account, okay? Click on the Student Partner Speaking button. You're going to see this button there, and then um, enable your microphone so when the browser says uh can the website use your microphone allow allow the browser to use the or allow the web page to use the microphone uh, and your speaker say yes definitely okay then you will see me in there in a moment 
as master and then you need to send me a message saying I want to volunteer and we can practice together let's finish 2022 strong so this is our academic IELTS website here again at aehelp.com okay um, the URL is in the chat click this big red button to join our premium IELTS package you can also try it for free by clicking the green button and then when you're in your my student account click this uh, so you've got a lot of different options here you've got computer-based exams interactive course videos uh, but right now we're looking for this uh, student partner speaking you click that student partner speaking except that you are responsible for your interactions and then here you will see me as master okay click on the blue envelope beside my handle master and send me a message say I want to volunteer and then I can connect with you and everybody will hear you and me speaking which is fantastic it will build your confidence and we will practice some answers here okay you can see some students in here are premium students some students are free students it's all great all right we've got lots of people in here um, let's start with one of our uh, premium volunteers let's start with um, Andrew Andrew are you ready So the goal here, everybody, is to practice your English, listen to your peers, repeat good English, learn vocabulary, learn mistakes, learn corrections, and improve your band score. Hello, Andrew. Can you hear me? I can't hear you, Andrew, so I'm not sure if something's going on on your end, but I should be able to hear you. Andrew, try refreshing the page. I've heard many students, um, when they do that, then uh, it seems to fix their microphone issues. So try refreshing the page, Andrew. Uh, log back in and we'll try it one more time, okay? And then if it's not working, then check your setup, your microphone and everything. So I'll do the same. I'll refresh my page, okay? And then um, I'll try it again. So Andrew, refresh your page, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, students, if you're if at any point uh, the chat stops for you because there's a lot of us in here during the live class, then uh, just refresh the page. Okay, here, let's try this again, Andrew. Hi, Andrew. Can you hear me now? I still can't hear you. No, we're seeming to have a bit of difficulty with Andrew. So, Andrew, check your setup. I'm going to try somebody else here, and then uh, we'll go from there, okay? Uh, let's try Romelia. Romelia, are you ready? The internet is a tricky beast. All right. Hello, Romelia. Let me make sure that I have the right. Yeah, okay. There we go. Romelia, are you there? Yeah, can you hear me? I can, yes, absolutely. Great. Okay. And things are working okay. on my end. How are you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. <laughs> Thank Good. you. What about you? I seem to be coming down with another flu. It's like I'm collecting them this year. I don't know what's going on, but. Uh, yeah um putting up a good fight though romelia i'm putting up a good fight <laughs> so i'm doing i'm doing yeah. okay i'm doing okay still uh romelia can you just tell everybody why you are taking the ielts exam oh, oh. hello hi romelia can you tell everybody oh. why you're taking the ielts exam no <laughs> You don't want to tell the people why you're taking IELTS? I don't, I don't think you heard the question. Oh, why? <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. It's such a bad connection. For my self-esteem, I'm not at all confident about my uh, guarding my English level. And I want to prove myself 
that I'm able to to speak a, <laughs> a natural good English at the end of the day, and uh, I am conscious conscious that um, in IELTS is a is a tough exam. And yeah, it's a reliable start. exam. Romelia, I think you have a good point there. So uh, good for you. I mean, it's it's one of the unusual reasons to take the test, right? To prove to yourself that you're good in English. But it's the best exam for that because it's reliable. If IELTS says that you have a, you know, band eight English, then it means you have very good English. So I agree. It's a good choice. Um, okay, Romelia. It's a long way for me. It's a long way for me. But hopefully. <laughs> With study, practice makes perfect. So let's do that exactly. right now. Exactly. As a new New Year resolution, maybe uh -huh. I'll, I'll be able to achieve a band date. That's a great New Year's resolution for everybody. If you, this is new for you, New Year's resolution means like a special goal that you have for the New Year. It's called a New Year resolution. So. Romelia's New Year resolution is to get a band aid. That's a great goal, Romelia. I think you can do it, Romelia. I honestly think that you can do that um, having spoken with you in the past. So let's do this. Let's practice a little bit. Are you ready? Okay. All right. Let's try. All right. Welcome to the speaking section of the IELTS exam. My name is Adrian. I will be your examiner for this part of the test. May I see your identification? Certainly. This is my passport. I used it to register a few weeks ago. Please have a look at my credentials. Okay. Part one, uh, I will ask you a couple of questions to get to know you better and some questions on a general topic. Why are you taking this test? In all honesty, uh, above all, uh, I'm taking this test to prove myself that I'm able to be a competent uh, communicator in this language and uh, on the other hand uh, I'm uh, aware that uh, I will uh, be able to use English uh, not only in my area of expertise but uh, also to uh, make friends to earn uh, Let's talk about money. writing. How often do you write? Writing is uh, an integral part of my uh, job and uh, on a daily basis uh, I uh, write uh, more often uh, than not uh, when I write, uh, I write uh, on my uh, computer. Uh, to be more specific, my analyzer has a computer, I'm a, I'm a biochemist and um, I use uh, an analyzer to carry on different tests and uh, sometimes when uh, suddenly any errors appear, I have to to jot down uh, the error and to inform the engineer what do you usually the maintenance. Write? Can can you repeat? What do you usually write? I write uh, different things. Uh, varying from uh, a poem uh, when I'm uh, in a specific uh, state of mind to professional things as I uh, already mentioned uh, before. Okay, I'll stop there and give you some feedback. <laughs> that was really good. Okay. All right, Romilia, uh, first of all, um, great job on uh, accuracy. So you did not make any mistakes with your grammar and um, your uh, choice of words. Sometimes you dragged your language to make sure that you're being accurate, but it was really accurate this time. So uh, no real mistakes with um, grammar. So yeah. your grammar accuracy. I wasn't that much focused on my vocabulary and my pronunciation. And in this case, I managed to <laughs> to have a good grammar. Yeah, you had great grammar. That was great grammar and accuracy, and that's that that is very important in both the writing and in the in the speaking. It's more important than using really fancy vocabulary. Using really fancy vocabulary with poor grammar is actually very confusing. So yeah. it's much much more important to have accurate grammar, and you did a great job in that. Um, that would easily be a band eight so far. Okay. So, so far that that's easily a band aid um, and that's beautiful. That's what you want to do, Romelia. Now, here are a couple of improvements. Okay. First of all, okay. 
don't keep talking until I interrupt you. So you notice how I interrupted you in the beginning for two of the four questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or three of the four questions? It's because you just kept talking and I had to interrupt you to get yeah. to the next question. The IELTS examiner will do this, okay? They don't have the time, they don't have the patience to wait for that much information, especially when they feel that they have the answer clearly. So, um, you know, I asked you, why are you taking this test? And you said, in all honesty, above all, um, I'm taking this test to prove to myself that I can be a competent communicator in English. And that was great. And then you kept talking, so I had to interrupt you. Now, the reason why this becomes a problem is because eventually when I interrupt you and I interrupt you and I interrupt you, you get frustrated. It's natural. We all do. All humans will eventually be like, stop talking when I'm talking. <laughs> right? It's a nerve wracking situation. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So we get we get frustrated. And then when we get frustrated, our communication starts to break down. It starts to become uh, a lower quality. So I asked you, how often do you write? And you said, writing is an integral part of my job on a daily basis. I write more often than not. Uh, when I write, I write on computer. I'm a biochemist. I use a, an analyzer. Now here, you should have used the number real quick and then just stopped. So you should have said, I am a biochemist and I use an analyzer to carry out my tasks. So I write uh, for about um, six hours a day. Okay, let's say. Yeah. And then just stop. But again, you kept carrying on. Quantitative language, yeah. Exactly. Quantitative language and then Number. complete, right? So you stop because what happened, and this is important for everybody, especially students who are going for those um, uh, fast track visas uh, for immigration where you need like that band seven, eight, nine score on the speaking and the writing. Um, so this is a very important piece of information here. So make sure that you don't get interrupted continuously by the examiner. So once you're finished, you have to stop. One, once I got to this question, what do you usually write? You had to ask me, can you repeat? And that's where your frustration started, okay? And in the real exam, Romelia, you're still just, you know, three minutes, two, three minutes into the exam. So the most of the exam is still in front of you. So you have to, you can't be frustrated by this point or getting, you know, irritated by my interruptions. So you said, can you repeat? And then you said, I write different things. So this is where we start to have communication breakdown, right? Because of you know from being in these classes often, Romelia, that you shouldn't use the word things. Right? <laughs> yeah. Um, so what could you say instead of I write different things? Mm. Different topics maybe. Yeah. In different... Uh, or different types uh, of literature. Yeah. Right? So I write different types of literature varying from a poem when I'm in a different state of mind uh, to professional what? Not professional things, but what's a better way to say it instead of professional things? Students, make sure to avoid the word things. It's a zero value word, okay? So what yeah. could you say here, uh, Romelia, instead of professional things? Professional things sounds extremely awkward because professional combined with the word things is an ox is a oxymoron, right? Professional things. Things is not professional. So professional yeah. things is extremely weird. It is a writing co containing uh, professional terminology. Yeah, exactly. So uh, <laughs> professional documents, to be more accurate, yeah. right? <laughs> So yeah. um, varying from a poem when I'm in a different state of mind to professional documents, as I already mentioned before. Let's practice this just once, Romelia. Repeat after me. Everybody watching, repeat after me and remind yourself to avoid the word things. Um, so listen, Romelia, and then repeat. Try not to read, okay? Here we go. So I write different types of literature varying from a poem when I'm in a different state of mind to professional documents, as I had already mentioned before. What do you usually write? I write different types of literature, varying from a poem when I'm in a different state of mind, professional document, as I have already mentioned before. Much better. And you can maintain that level or that quality of communication as long as you're not being interrupted every second yeah. response, right? So Exactly. So, Romelia, first of all, hats off for your focus to grammar. That was brilliant. I thought that was a great improvement in this uh, quick Q&A. Um, and then just that quick tip of make sure to finish. Strong finish, stop, wait for the next question, okay? I learned something new today. Thank you so much. Uh, I mean, 
at my level of uh, preparation now, I have to sacrifice something. Either the, the vocabulary or the fluency or the grammar. And uh, now I know I don't have to, to strive for uh, a specific word. You have to Fancy use vocabulary. good vocabulary, but you don't need to use very unique or very great vocabulary. It's much more important exactly. to have great grammar. Okay. Awesome, Romelia. That's a great realization. Have an awesome rest of the day. Yeah. Nice vocabulary. If it's to come, will come. Anyway. <laughs> it comes at yeah. a cost too, right? Okay. Bye, Romelia. Okay. Bye. Thank you so much. That was Romelia. Let's give her a thumbs up. That was, you know, we have these epiphanies. Um, Romelia has a lot of vocabulary and she just realized that, yeah, okay, I can use some really fancy idioms and vocabulary, but that comes at a cost. Okay, students, again, I'm going to just refresh the page here um, and uh, just send me a message again. Every time I refresh the page, all of your messages disappear. So just send me another uh, message here and then... Um, I will reach out to a volunteer and uh, as soon as I see somebody volunteering, um, we'll wait for a few more. I'm looking for new students as well, everybody. So Chayani, I see you. Ridham, I see you. And I will definitely keep that in mind. I'm also looking for new volunteers. I want to really encourage um, new students to be confident and to uh, try their English, okay? Like here, I think MS might be new. Let's try M. Oh, MS just disappeared. Maybe they got freaked out a little bit. What? Um, so I'm looking for some new new faces, new voices. Okay. All right. Um, let's try somebody we haven't heard from in a while, maybe. Let's try Cunwall, the top here. All right. Are you ready? Okay, Savvy, I can see you in the chat. You say, I would like to try. Make sure to go to our website, aehelp.com. Okay, that's where you need to uh, do this. Kanwal, if you're there, let me know. Here we go. Hello, Kanwal. Yeah. How are you, Kanwal? I'm good. What about you? I am doing good as well. It sounds like you are in a crowd of people. Can you hear me okay, Kanwal? Yes, yes, I'm hearing you. Okay, Kanwal. Um, where are you right now? I'm from Pakistan. You're from Pakistan. Okay. It sounds like you're in uh, some uh, group of people, like in a community center or something like that. Are you at home? Yes, I'm at home, but you do the holidays. Are there a lot of are there relatives? Ah, that's what it is. Relatives visiting. It's not a surprise. It's uh, definitely the holidays. Okay, Kanwal, why are you taking the IELTS exam? Can you repeat that again? Yes. Why are you taking the IELTS exam? Uh, I'm planning to take it in Jan. Okay, that's a when answer. I was asking you why, why you are taking the IELTS exam. Yeah, I'm taking it to go abroad. Taking it studies. to go abroad for higher studies. Okay, focus on those yes. full sentences, Kanwal. All right, I'm going to ask you a couple more questions and then I will give you some feedback. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, then let's talk about writing. <laughs> Do you prefer to write by hand or on the computer? Um, it's depend upon the situation, uh, but uh, I think my handwriting is good and uh, I will prefer to uh, write with the hand because since from my childhood uh, I am writing with the hand and uh, I use less uh, typing so that's why I will prefer to write with hand. If you could write a book, what would it be about? 
um, it would be about the life because uh, or it could also be about the experience which I have experienced in my life uh, or uh, some tips and tips for others to for sorry I'm a little bit nervous have you ever written a letter or email in another language yes uh, I wrote an uh, email to my university in just a few days back, uh, uh, which is situated in US, and I wrote it in the English language, which is not my native uh, language. And yeah. okay, just a second. <laughs> All right, so that would be about a band uh, six um, so far, Kunwal. Um, and the band six you would get because you're fluent and you actually have pretty good English, but you need to show it to me a bit better. I think that you could probably get a band seven even with your English. You just have to be a bit more confident and um, really focus on complete, clear answers, okay? When you get going, so when you're fluent and you're thinking and you're speaking, then it's really good, but sometimes you just get stuck. And you said you're nervous, so I understand. Uh, first of all, a big thumbs up for you that you know, you're know you doing this even with all the family and all the noise around you, so good for you. Um, all right, um, so my question here was, do you prefer to write by hand or on the computer? And you said, it depends on the situation. Usually you want to avoid saying it depends. On the IELTS, it's better to just choose one or the other. So just say, I prefer to write by hand because I'm faster. I have been doing this since childhood, so I'm more confident. Uh, this is the reason I'm doing the paper-based IELTS exam. Okay, boom, and then you're good to go. So it's easier when you don't say it depends, all right? Now, in this case, you might say it depends because we do use the computer for some kinds of information and for other kinds of information we use uh, paper. So you could say it depends on the situation, but then you need to explain that it depends. Like, it depends on the situation. When I'm writing a grocery list, <coughs> Uh, I prefer paper because I can take it with me easily to the store. Uh, but if I'm writing an email, of course, I prefer the computer. Okay, so if you say it depends, you have to explain the it depends. If you don't explain the it depends, then it's uh, confusing. So can you just repeat after me? Uh, it depends on the situation. When I'm writing a grocery list, I prefer paper because I can take it with me easily to the store. But if I'm writing an email, of course, I choose the computer. Do you prefer to write by hand or on the computer? It's depending on the situation. When I'm writing a grocery list, I prefer paper because I can take it with me easily to the store. But if I am writing an email, of course, I choose to use the computer. Much better. That's a band nine, okay? If you say it like that, and see, I can feel that you have the English for this. So you just really want to build that confidence. And the way to do that is to volunteer like what you're doing right now. That's really good. Just one more quick tip for you as well. Um, when you hear a conditional question, they often will have this kind of conditional question in part one. And it's, if you could write a book, what would it be about? Use the full condition. So given the chance to compose a novel. It would be about uh, life. Um, and then you said, you said because it could be uh, also about the experiences which I have experienced. Um, so if you're writing um, your own life story, what is that called in English? Maybe somebody in the chat uh, can help uh, Kunwal a little bit. When you write your own life story, what are you writing? Anybody know? There's one word for that in English. 
I would write my autobiography. That's right. Have you heard this word before, Kunwal? Autobiography? Uh, yes. Okay, that's your life story. So if you have that vocabulary, this is definitely a good place to use it. Uh, everybody, just repeat after me. Kunwal, repeat after me. I would write my autobiography. I would write my autobiography. Given the chance to compose a novel, I would write my autobiography. Given the chance to compose a novel, I would write my autobiography. Awesome. Kanwal, one day I hope to read it. Thank you so much for volunteering. Okay. All right. I hope you have a great rest of the day and I hope that you enjoy the company that is around you. Um, have a lovely, lovely rest of the day. And if we don't speak before the New Year's, then have an awesome New Year's. Thank you, Adrian. Bye, Kanwal. Bye. All right. That was Kanwal. Um, fantastic. Very nice. Let's give her a thumbs up. She was a bit nervous. Um, by the way, uh, this is for everybody, including Kunwal. It's okay to say, I'm sorry, I'm a bit nervous, but then say, I'm sorry, I'm a bit nervous. Just give me a moment to collect my thoughts and then continue speaking, okay? Don't just stop, all right? So if you're feeling a bit nervous, it's okay. In fact, it's a good idea in your speaking exam to say, I'm a bit nervous. Please give me a second to collect my thoughts and then take a deep breath, <sighs> exhale, Collect your thoughts and go again. All right, um, let's take one of our uh, premium students here. Let's uh, talk a bit with Zoraida. Zoraida, are you ready? Again, students, to become a premium student on the website, just click any of the big red buttons that you see on the website to join the premium package. Uh, I believe some of you can actually see it on this page here, okay? So Zoraida, here we go. Hi, Zoraida. Yes, I am here. <laughs> I hear you. How are you doing? I am doing great. How are you? I am doing okay, like I was uh, telling uh, Romalia, I'm fighting this cold. Uh, Zoraida, can you speak up a bit? You're a little bit on the quiet side. Uh, okay, I have to make my voice louder. Okay. That's a good way to be, especially for the IELTS. Um, Zoraida, can you tell everybody what your hopes and dreams are uh, mm -hmm. after you get that awesome score on the IELTS exam? After I get a good score in IELTS exam, my, I, my dream is to apply for a job in Canada in the field of chemistry. That's right. I remember that. You're a chemist. Mm -hmm. Okay, Zoraida, I will help you with this. So, yeah, you and Romelia are both chemists. Maybe you, you could have a lot to talk about if you connect with each other through the chat system. Um, all right, um, so uh, let you might even have some good ideas about work and jobs. Um, all right, Zoraida, uh, here we go. Let me ask you some questions. Are you ready? Yes, I am. Okay, then let's talk about writing. How often do you write? I write every day, particularly Monday to Friday, since that is my work schedule. And my job requires a lot of writing, being a chemical laboratory analyst. I am writing about uh, the results of my tests. Four hours ago was the last time I wrote something about my tests. What do you rarely write? I rarely write emails because in my job, there is somebody who is in charge of that. So mainly my uh, writing is all about my work. Do you uh, prefer to write by hand or on the computer? I prefer writing by hand since my work, you, the kind of data that I write is a raw data of my tests so it requires handwriting since it has to be finalized yet after my work if you could write a book what would it be about if i have a chance to write a book it would be about my life story being a working mom and a head of the family at the same time have you ever written a letter or an email in another language Yes, I had. 
I wrote an email uh, in Korean language. We call it Hangugmal. Uh, when I requested for a certificate of employment in my previous from my previous employer in South Korea. That is the end of part one. That concludes the speaking section of the exam. You will have your mark in about uh, two days online after you finish the other. Okay, so we have part two, part three as well coming up. But um, anyway, uh, that was really good, Zoraida. You're starting to get the right idea of what kind of communication the IELTS really needs for those high band scores. And I can confidently say that that was also a band eight level um communication there so your answers were accurate they were clean they were clear you weren't really making any grammatical mistakes your pronunciation was spot on I could easily understand every word that you were using nice uh, um, pronunciation features with the uh, different vowel consonant combinations so that was really really good uh, let me give you a few tips on how you can improve it to make it even uh, better and I noticed that you were really paying attention to finishing what you're saying so you're not being interrupted by me and having a strong finish. I, I noticed that you, you took that advice. You're like, okay, I got to finish strong, right? Mm -hmm. So that was really good. Yeah. Um, the first answer that you gave was almost on the long side. I almost interrupted you, but then you had such a good kind of last example that I let you finish without interrupting. So that was clever, okay? So you said I write yeah. every day, particularly Monday to Friday uh, for your work. Now, it was very smart that you kept connecting your answers with your work. So obviously your work requires a lot of writing from you and that's where mm -hmm. most of it happens. So it made sense that you kept using your workplace as a connection point between your ideas. That was also very, very okay. clever. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so that was good. How often do you write? Very good. Um, and then I went with this question. What do you rarely write? And here you did something really smart too. I wonder if everybody noticed what Zoraida did that was really smart. Zoraida, you said, I rarely write emails. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I have a feeling that might not be completely true in the real world um, because I think yeah, most I of think us, <laughs> most, most of us do write a good number of emails, whether for work or for personal emails. We, mm -hmm. we all kind of log in on a daily basis and write at least an email or two. But you know what? The IELTS is not about the truth. So, yeah. and the concept of always and the concept of rarely is subjective. So maybe in your mind, writing just one email every couple of days is rarely, and that's fine, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. I'm not here to judge you as the examiner. So you said, I mm -hmm. rarely write emails because in my job, there is, um, now instead of somebody, let's choose a better word than somebody. <laughs> um, what's a better word than somebody? Uh, there is an employee in charge of writing, or I could say, an assistant or yeah secretary? all of the all of those there is all of those are better than somebody okay so um <laughs> words like so students words like somebody or things or something yeah, I know all it, of I, those are yeah they're garbage words right we want to replace those yeah it's not specific actually not specific at all right like it's very mm -hmm. general yeah, yeah, so I rarely, right. yeah so and if you keep using them throughout your speaking eventually it will lead mm -hmm. to a lower score right mm -hmm. um, so I rarely write emails because in my job there is a secretary secretary is great word for it secretary mm -hmm. who is in charge of that instead of that um, instead of uh, in charge of communications oh, okay. right um, and then again give numbers so I only write one or two emails a week Okay. Right, let's finish that idea, okay? So you want to find mm -hmm. that perfect balance, Zoraida, all right? Okay, sir, thank you. Um, and then this one, do you prefer to write by hand or computer? That was a bit of a tough one because you kind of had to rethink it. So you said, I prefer writing my hand since uh, in my work, uh, the kind of data I write requires handwriting. Okay, sure. And not every answer has to be really long and perfect. After class, mm -hmm. maybe you can think about how you could have explained that a little bit better. It's fine. Okay. Um, here, it was good that you used the question in your answer. So I said, if you could write a book, what would it be about? You said, if I have a chance to write a book, it would be about my life story, being a working mom and the head of the family. 
this is very challenging and I think I have done a great uh, job so far um, mm. so others in my boots could um, so I need to add could really gain some life hacks from uh, my experiences sure a little bit more yeah so it would have need a little bit more but the most important point Zoraida is with the present perfect use the present perfect mm -hmm. and the next question have you ever written a letter okay and this isn't a, this is an important piece of advice I keep repeating uh, in the classes and it is a really important one as soon as you hear the present perfect use the present perfect uh, yes I had is okay but yes I mm -hmm. have is a bit better just so that you tell your brain okay present perfect present perfect yes I have and then instead of I wrote say I have written I have written an email an email in Korean and you don't need to translate it in Korean when I requested uh, work in uh, South Korea from my current uh, boss uh, June okay so um, you need to use that present perfect uh, and then you might want to throw in another one I have also uh, written a lot of emails in English mm -hmm as this is the global language of business and travel right so something like that so lots of present perfect mm -hmm. let's try that okay so I want you to say the answer one more time here's the writer but just with lots of present perfect have you ever written a okay. letter or email in another language yes I have I have written an email in the Korean language when I requested work in South Korea from my current bo boss Jun I have also written a lot of emails in English as this is the global language of business and travel. Good. There you go. So lots of have, have, haves. Mm -hmm. And then the examiner is like, okay, can use the present perfect, no problem. Plus, not only that, also when you get to part two, there's a very good chance that you can use the present perfect, okay? Um, because present perfect is used to show achievement, experience, change over time. Uh, expectation so part two cue card in many cases will involve these kinds of situations of experience expectation achievement and by using the present perfect in those last one or two questions of part one it really reminds you for part two that okay I should be focusing on this present perfect grammar just to show that grammatical range and accuracy okay Zoraida okay thank you very much for the advice you're very very welcome Zoraida keep up the good work and we'll talk again yes, sir. thank you okay bye thank for you. now thank you all right that was Zoraida again working very very hard let's uh, uh, give a thumbs up there all right um, Farnas Farouk if you want to volunteer go to our website ahelp.com if somebody wants to be a premium level student click on that big red button that you see on your screen in here okay um, let's try somebody else uh, let's uh, who should we go for here? Uh, let's see if we got any anybody that maybe knew Thang. Thang. I don't think we've really talked too much to Thang. Let's see if Thang is around. Thang, are you there? Are you ready? Have you st stuck out or stuck in there? Stuck with us? If yes, let me know. Just quickly uh, send me a, like a yes or I'm ready or, and then we can we can connect. Okay. By the way, students, when you're studying, what you want to do is you want to keep this uh, chat window open so that other students can ping you and then just refresh it every now and then so you can see the new people who are joining in or coming in. It should kind of auto refresh every now and then, but. Uh, but that's what you want to do. So you want to give people a chance to connect with you and send you a message, just like I'm sending Thang a message right now. Now, if Thang can see me or hear me, uh, let me know. If not, uh, we'll jump to somebody else. Okay. All right. Uh, let's try... Uh 
Maybe Gagan Deep. Are you ready? Okay. So stay in there, students. Hang in there. If you when you see me contact, you just send me a yes, sure. Okay, Gagan Deep is ready. Here we go. Hi, Gagan Deep. Hello. How are you? I'm fine. About what about you? I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. Gagandeep, can you tell everybody where you are and why you're taking IELTS? Um, I'm from India and I'm taking IELTS so that I can pursue my uh, pursue my career in software engineering. I wish to uh, I wish to immigrate to Canada for my future studies. Okay, great. And whereabouts in India are you? India is huge. It's like saying you're. I'm in Europe. Yeah, um, I'm from the east past uh, east part of India. Uh, it's a small state called Odisha. Okay, it's a smaller state. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How many How many states? India has quite a few states. How many states does it have? Uh, last time I checked, it was around twenty eight. I guess twenty eight. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right, Gagan Deep. Let's do this. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> All <Not> right. <laughs> good, good, good. Take a deep breath. Focus on the answers. Focus on yourself. Don't worry about the rest. There we go. Here we go. Let's talk about writing. How often do you write? Yeah. Uh, apart from writing my to-do list every morning, uh, I write maybe about six to seven hours a day to practice my uh, listening, writing, and stuff. Uh, what do you rarely write? Uh, something which I don't write often is uh, emails. Uh, I don't usually have a part-time job with. Um, part-time job that I have to contact my boss or something so I don't usually write emails what do you usually write uh, most of the time I try to write poet uh, poetry but uh, I'm not actually good at it do you prefer to write by hand or computer uh, I prefer to write by computer because I think computer provides you a way to correct your problems uh, whereas pen and paper does not Okay, we'll stop there. And I'll give you some feedback. I'm just catching up with some of what you said. All right, so that would be about a band seven. But you should be getting like a band 8.5 with a few corrections, okay? So you have really clean, clear English. I can tell that you've used English a lot in your life. Your pronunciation is fantastic. I can easily understand you. Um, and of course, you know, it's is it the first time, Gagandeep, that we're talking uh, to each other? Yeah, yeah, this is my first time. Mm -hmm. I just made this account. I, I was hoping that, it, you know, I'd have a, some first time <laughs> volunteers. So good for you. I was, I was yeah. kind of searching for that because yeah, a lot of people are really nervous the first few times. And it's a great way to break that nervousness by, you know, just putting yourself out there. So first of all, you get a double thumbs up from me uh, for being brave and just doing it um, okay and when you're when you're confident uh, you can you will correct a lot of the mistakes that I will show you right now okay so the first question that I asked you is how often do you write and you said apart from writing my to-do list every morning I write six to seven hours a day and then you said to practice my speaking listening and stuff Okay, there's only one word in the English language that's worse than things. And that word is yeah. stuff. That word is stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so stuff is a slang for things. Stuff is absolutely unprofessional and unacademic. Okay, so when you're in an academic situation, when you're in IELTS, definitely, definitely do not use the word stuff. Okay. I think I'm getting anxious. Exactly. I knew because that. Because it is my first time. Yeah. And I knew that that's what was going on. And that's what happened. Unfortunately, that's what anxiety does is it leads us into these really problematic situations. So like I practice every day speaking with my sister mm -hmm. and I'm usually quite fluent with her. And fluency is great. So also really pay attention to content. Okay. So what you're saying and your word choice. So here, um, you want to take out stuff. Uh, I write six to seven hours a day to practice my speaking, listening, and other parts of the IELTS. 
okay, and English. And then when you feel like you're about to get anxious and nervous and end your answer in kind of an awkward or strange way, one good trick, uh, Gangandeep, is to immediately um, jump to an example, right? Like an easy example. I wrote uh, a 300 word essay before this test. Okay, so just like a quick, simple example like that. Um, can you repeat after me? Um, apart from writing my to-do list every morning, I write six to seven hours a day, practicing, speaking, listening, other parts of the IELTS. I wrote a 300 word essay before this test. How often do you write? Apart from writing, uh, writing my to-do list every morning, I write six to seven hours a day to practice my speaking, listening, and other parts of the IELTS, English, IELTS and English. I wrote three, uh, 300 word essay before this test. Okay, so just that, that quick, and don't say for example, don't say for instance. Notice how I, I'm not saying for example, because there's no reason, right? It's a clear example. Um, so, so you just jump to a very, very short, quick example, and that takes practice. So for everybody who's watching, don't wait for the IELTS exam to start doing that. You need to start practicing your smooth, quick, clear, concise examples before the test. So when you get to the IELTS, those examples come to your mind very quickly and easily, especially when you feel like you're nervous especially when you feel that you've gone off topic or you're not making enough sense then you jump to that example and that example can easily save you and can save you a couple of band scores okay all right I will keep that in mind okay so Gagandeep otherwise good job uh, avoid the word you as well so when I ask you do you prefer to write by computer or uh, by hand, you gave me a really good answer. The one big mistake there that you said is um, you. So you said, um, let me see where I, if I can find that here. Um, you said, I prefer to write by computer because I think computer provides you. Um, instead of you, say me. I think the computer provides me a way to correct my problems okay. as where pen and paper does not um, okay so you can say that's why that's the reason uh, I always uh, type my school essays in MS Word okay all right so it's me my I never switch to the you your it becomes very confusing okay okay all right Gagandeep Come back and volunteer again. Keep building that confidence, okay? Uh, yeah, sure. Thank you. Have a good time. <laughs> you too. Have a great rest of your day. And very good for you and your sister to practice English together. I commend you for that. Thank you. I appreciate it. Okay. Bye, Gagandeep. Let's give Gagandeep a big thumbs up. Students, um, that's all the time I have for today. And I did keep an eye out for everybody else. So, Alexander Fuang, I forget you not. I will look for you in the next classes for volunteering, so make sure you come back, volunteer some more. I really wanted to give a chance to some of our uh, recent, current, uh, new students to uh, give this a go as well. This is our website that we're using, everybody, aehelp.com. That's the big red button there that you want to press to join our premium IELTS package. Again, it's a one-time payment for lifetime access. So you click on that. You click, okay, enter coupon code. We've got a coupon code for you today. Uh, change 9 will give you a 10% discount. The cost is different in different countries depending on your economy. So if you're in a country where the economy is maybe not so strong, it's actually much, much cheaper. Check it out. Um, and this is our general IELTS here, gieltshelp.com. Tomorrow we've got reading and writing classes for you. So reading for members and writing for subscribers. Definitely subscribe to the YouTube channel. Thank you members. Thank you Domenico, Karina, Fuang, uh, Chayani for your questions, your support. I hope all of you have a great rest of the day. Uh, stay healthy. Don't follow my example. Jeez, I'm uh, just getting one cold after the next. Um, and again, uh, make sure to visit us at uh, aehelp.com and gieltshelp.com. You've got all the materials, all the tools there to be successful on your IELTS exam. We use those websites all the time in these live classes as well. So if you're watching us regularly, then join the premium package. It's great advice. Have a lovely day. Bye, everybody. See you tomorrow.